Okay, we're going to look at this question in a little bit more detail because it's on the surface quite tricky because it seems like they don't give you very much information. So if you look at our RMS equation, you see that it's the square root of 3 times Boltzmann's constant times the temperature divided by the mass of the molecules themselves. Now we're not changing the gas, so the mass of the molecules themselves is constant, K is constant, and of course 3 is constant. So there's a technique for doing these questions where there's kind of a before and after scenario. The before scenario being at 20 degrees Celsius, the after scenario being a little bit warmer to increase the speed. So what you can always do in physics is make a ratio. Let's get all our constants isolated. Let's get that 3k over m by itself on the equation. So to do that, we're going to square both sides. So now I get VRMS squared is 3kT over m. And once again, we want to get the 3kT over m all by itself. So let's just simply divide both sides by t. And I get VRMS squared over temperature is equal to my constants. And all that means is exactly what we just said. Our RMS velocity squared divided by our temperature, that ratio has to remain constant in any kind of before and after scenario. So why don't we write it as a ratio? Now I'm going to drop the RMS word there and just call it V1 squared over T1. So the initial velocity squared over its initial temperature has to stay constant. So the new velocity squared over the new temperature would have to be the same value. Now all it is is a matter of working in our information. Um, the initial temperature, T1, is 20 degrees Celsius. But of course, we don't want Celsius in physics, we want Kelvin. So we're going to add 273 to this number, and we're going to get 293 Kelvin. That's my initial temperature. There's T1. We're trying to find the new temperature, T2. Now the only other tricky part is dealing with our velocities. The original velocity is V1, and V2 is going to be 1% increased. So using some simple mathematics, we say that V2 is going to be 1.01 times V1. In other words, it's 101% of V1. That represents an increase of 1%. So V1 will leave as V1, V2 will plug in as 1.01 V1. Let's see what we get. V1 squared over 293 Kelvin equals 1.01 V1, but that's all squared, so we've got to make sure we get our brackets, over T2. Now when we remove our brackets, we get the following. 1.01 .01 squared is 1.0201, so we've got that number. The V is also squared, so we get V1 squared on the right, all divided by T2, which is what we're looking for, equals, on the left, V1 squared over 293. So notice the V1 squareds actually cancel this, the same on either side, so they're gone. A little bit of cross multiplying on the right gives us T2 is 1.0201 times 293 Kelvin, which gives us 299 Kelvin, or ultimately, when we convert back to degrees Celsius, 25.9.